Oh my God, here we are again, live from Split Croatia. It is August 8th, 2020. I, you know, that is, the time is unknown, but the date is reasonably sure. Luca. Gordon. Pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. So I am, this is a special sort of non-sequential episode of Crypto Wednesdays. Of course, we have Crypto Wednesdays episode eight coming up this Wednesday, naturally, uh, in a few days now. And the reason that I'm here with is because of my new friend, Luca. Uh, Luca Susik, I want to say, yep. uh, who is a, shall we say, an ex Yugoslav, but definitely a Croatian native, mm-hmm. um, who's kind enough or being kind enough to introduce me to several other people. And it's going to be part of the panel that he and I are putting together for next Wednesday about the Croatian cryptocurrency and blockchain environment. But Luca is interesting enough and available enough that we're doing a pre show with him, dedicated to him. So <laughs> Thank you very much. I, I think the hat alone warrants that that <laughs> accolade. No, he, he's a very good guy, very interesting background. I thought it was worth taking some time just to explore it and you know introduce him separately or additionally, I should say. And so, Luca, again, thank you for making the time. Thank you for having me. Yep, it's yeah. a real pleasure. Yeah, it's it's been great knowing you, and you know your family's here, and you know got to meet your daughter and yeah. everything else, and you know this is a good guy, good family man. Um, so, let. You know, obviously, the, the, the show, the panel is going to be about the Croatian cryptocurrency mm-hmm. and blockchain environment in general. But let's learn about a little bit about yourself. You know, sure. where, where specifically are you from? Tell us a little bit about your kind of growing up experience, and then sure. we'll, we'll get into how you got into crypto and blockchain. So, so uh, thanks, Gordon. First off, thanks for having me. Uh, it's a real pleasure and um, nice meeting you and uh, the family. It has been uh, quite a nice experience. Yes. Um, so, about me, I'm uh, basically just normal guy from Croatia. I was born um, in former Yugoslavia. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I've kind of, I have the, had a taste from the, you know, from both ends of the, of the stick, uh, mm-hmm. you know. So I grew up, I was born and grew up uh, in, in uh, partially in the communist times uh, during the, I was uh, growing up during the, 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 the war, mm-hmm. kind of, I was 17 when it ended, 18 when the whole thing started. And um, Wait, 18 when it started? Oh uh, no, Eight. 11, 11 when it yeah, started, okay. 18, 18 when it finished, 1998. I just finished high school and kind of entered into the whole, the, you know, world of grown up uh, space, uh, mostly into tech. So I'm a big. Now let's pause for a second. You were a pioneer, a pioneer. Pioneer, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah during yeah. the I, Yugoslavian times, yeah, yeah, they're like the red scarf and the. Exactly. So front, I think I was. You know, Marshal Tito. Yeah, I was the all. last generation that was, it was kind of a a little bit like a mixture between a kind of like a communist um, version of the Boy Scouts yes uh, so you would you would you would um, you know kind of uh, pass the oath about uh, you being uh, an honest and and, and hardworking mm-hmm. and loyal to the you know the, the revolution and mm-hmm. the, the marshal and all of these things um, so I think that was uh, I think it was last last generation I think 1980. 1989 or something like this. I was nine years old. Wow. So that was the the last Boy Scouts. Uh. There's a movie with Bruce Willis actually. I know the last. You should make a movie very big. You should make the fan. last pioneer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of a transitional phase. Not only n- not only because it was like a transition from a communist, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, the um, ecosystem and communist country into a modern modern democracy like a. a a capitalist society, but also kind of a journey where technology started kind of opening up and mm-hmm. started becoming more and more relevant, which kind of coincided with with, with my life. And, and, uh, and you said since a young age, you've always been involved with or attracted yeah. to technology. Somehow, I was that. always I was always kind of fascinated by it, but because technology for me was I don't know, you know, you, 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 when you're a child, everything is new and everything is so fascinating. I kind of you know. Throughout life, as you become a little bit older, mm-hmm. you know, you have less and less novelty and less and less amazement unless you are in technology because the technology keeps mm. evolving really fast and gives you all these new interesting possibilities, all these like the future is always big and full of potential. So it's kind of, you know, going back when I was a kid, when I was 17, 18, like... Uh, Actually, let me, let me pause you. So mm-hmm. I, I, I don't know about the audience, but that's the first time I've heard that particular point made and that particular point is deep. Very deep, okay. You know the the idea that if you as you become older, there's less fresh and new in the world, and by definition, the one place that's not true is technology, because that is the one thing in the world that moves at a breakneck pace consistently. And so, if you want to keep your sense of childhood wonder, it's a natural thing to be to seek that in technology. That's a, that was actually 
<laughs> that's a very deep point, and I've never actually I've never heard anyone articulate that particular point before. So, so that's fantastic. So, so so for me it was kind of a reality, and it needed, like it didn't come naturally, but I just realized that uh, like I when I was growing up and when I was kind of you know um, going through the normal phases as everyone else going to high school going to university you know starting our like first first jobs first businesses things like this mm -hmm. like I, I i got bored very easily because it, it, at some point you know things become stale and sure. you would always seek out new thrills and then tech was always something like initially it was just computers and then you know the internet came and i was i remember i was maybe 14 or 15, mm -hmm. when I first browsed the internet through a graphical browser, it was called Mosaic back then, Netscape, yep. and I remember like it blew my mind completely. And the whole thing was, um, like, in retrospect, I remember, oh, I need to follow this path somehow. Mm -hmm. um, but back then it was just, just you know, I wanted more of it. I wanted because it was new and fresh and, and, and I could imagine, I was a big fan of science fiction, I was sure. a big fan of, you know, as every every kid. Back then, so it, you know, I can, I can relate. Blade Runner changed my life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Blade Runner and, you know, later on, Matrix. I was, yep. I think, 19 when it came out, 1999 or something. Mm -hmm. So all of these things kind of uh, combined together. In and like I stayed throughout my whole life, I was always close to tech somehow. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a programmer or I wanted to code or I wanted to learn how to code just a curiosity and then later it just stayed within you know within the that never never you know decided actually I, I studied law for a couple of years um just because you know uh, let, let's uh, <coughs> for the audience just remind everyone I'm Gordon Ice I'm a crypto law partner so I was foolish enough to actually complete <laughs> law school go past the bar and then not stop not practice law for a long time until Bitcoin brought me back Luca was, was smart enough to actually <laughs> no. peel off from that and you were, you, were, you were telling me that your parents had a certain point of view about you not completing your legal studies. Yeah. What was that like? It was, ooh, it was challenging. I mean, my father was a you know a guy who's like, if you started something, you need to finish it. But some like, when I was 18, I like started studying studying law because there was you know the most obvious thing. Like my father was, and everybody around me was like, look at that talk. We like to argue, so mm -hmm. law is of course. You know, a logical step for you. But then, and I took the route. And, and by the way, I have to point out. So my son is a. 14 year old non-stop <laughs> arguer about everything so yes I'm, I think your parents were wise for at least starting you there because don't don't and let a good argument go to waste and I'm really thankful for this because I think yeah. it, like the, the, these couple of years were really useful for me later in life because sure. like he, he gave they gave me they gave me a, 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 a deep understanding on how things function in a society in a government in and in, in, in kind of a, a civilization in general from what they're coming from what are good the point. laws how they are formed, in what way they can be changed, and all of these things. And in, 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 in consequence, it kind of brought me into the whole blockchain and crypto space because mm -hmm. I got it, like it got. So I'm really passionate about changes mm -hmm. in general, about disruption, and technology is there to change the way that we do a lot of things. So I start like I uh, like for the longest of times I was like I'm very passionate about mobile technology, mm -hmm. and this was back when mobiles were like very fresh, very new, especially smartphones. So we were like, talking about like you, we we're talking back in the PDA days. Back in the PDA days, right. handspring visors, yep. uh, pocket PCs like IPAX and uh, Palm Prees and all of these like uh, Palm Pilots, all of these things. Because for me, it was like the, the, the compendium of all human knowledge is like in your pockets, and mm -hmm. you know you can be the smartest guy in the room just because you have a device in your pocket, and you can kind of. So what's yeah. the distance between the the, 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 the Earth and the Sun? You know, I have no idea. Let me let me check. So mm. somehow I stayed within this uh, that space, uh, but it kind of draw. As, as I was growing up, I saw some imperfections and impurities and some, let's say, um, changes needed within the space. And well, when you say th within the space, the, within the mobile space or within technology? Within the the world itself, mm. like the, the the way that we are. And uh, in in essence, this is what like when I was a kid, I, I dreamt of a world where people were like reality through a mobile phone. And like in 2008 or 2009, I started a company with a couple of friends. We started decided doing mobile applications, and this is this is back when Nokia was the smartest, like the mm -hmm. the most popular phone. Symbian Series 60 was the the the, the 95 percent of the or 75 percent of the market. Windows CE was something like uh, uh, you know of a thing back then. Before <laughs> has it changed? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, I dreamt of you know m mobile apps being used for everything, like paying electricity, driving around town, ordering food, all of these things, and finally came. 
But then, you know, as the technology progresses, you start realizing that technology can be used for for many, many things. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we can do and we don't use it as much is, you know, the governance of people, the governance, uh, like creation of the laws, passing of the laws, voting, all of these things. And this kind of brought me to, 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 to the whole blockchain and the crypto space. I mean, there's a big journey behind it. I'm, uh, I'm That's a That's an interesting path, though, that, like you're, to go from mobile specifically into blockchain. That's mm, So there is like a stretch of, because like I, I'm a, oh, so if you ask people about me, mm -hmm. one of the things that are going to say about me, I'm, I'm, I'm a generalist and I'm a very curious By the way, I have to point out to the audience, so we're on the Croatian coast right now, the Adriatic's over there, the sun is setting, and I'm really sunburned, so I'm using Luca <laughs> with his head <laughs> and his hat as, a, as an umbrella. So if you see me moving me, me back and forward, that's what's going on, so I wanted to thank you. So when people oh, ask gracious. about you, I'm just going to stay um, in the shade. So, yeah. you know, like one of the definitions of me is I'm, I'm super curious and I like to kind of explore different avenues of different, like, it, it depend, it's not only technology, it can be governance, it can be basically anything. Sure, got it. If it's fascinating enough for me, I'm going to start digging deeper. So, um, I had many startups, I, 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 I worked in many startups, I basically started a lot of, a lot of ideas, companies and things like this, so mm. it's, it's, it, it was not a, like a straightforward line. It was like a back and forth and a lot of kind of, you know, going around. Mm -hmm. So I've done many, many things um, on, on, on many, many levels. I ended up in a large corporation. I worked for a very large telecom for like seven, eight years. Now, I'm going to pause you. I'm going to do something non-standard just because of where we are. Mm -hmm. Lola, right? Yeah. Uh, Vlad, Lola, come here. What? Come here. We're live. Come here. I hit my head. So hold on. OK, so everyone. Ready? This is a special episode of Crypto Wednesdays. This is the creation ed edition. Hi. Marina, come over here also. So this is the next generation that next we're doing. This is next gen. This is why we're doing blockchain and why we're doing crypto. I'm bleeding. Yeah, so not that way, everyone. Not that way. Everyone. Okay, so that's Lola. Yes, Luca? Lola. Lola. Hi, Lola. Wave Hi. to the world. Okay, this is Vlad. Hello. Okay, he looks very serious with his hair coming back. He's really not like, you know, <laughs> he's not like a right-wing bruiser. Don't worry, or not yet. <laughs> Uh, Marina? Hi. Uh, come, okay, now we gotta be clear. This is Marina, my wife. So we're basically all in Croatia for my birthday week. And we're doing this because we have good people that we found here and we're involved in crypto. And, you know, their voices are in the background. But this is why we're doing it. The next generation, so they can have a good planet and not be stuck with the way the 2020 is going. Hopefully. But, you know, but <laughs> like be on a better trajectory. So, Lola, you're awesome. You're precocious. Give me a, give me a, a bump. What? Bump. Yeah. Cool. All right. Thanks, Have kids. Fun. All right, so going on. Okay, so Luca the Curious mm -hmm. started, did many startups, got involved in a lot of projects, got recruited into a lot of things. It was, you know, there was a mobile aspect. It wasn't just mobile. Go so on. I started from, from the mobile space because it was, it was like, basically it was up and coming. Mm -hmm. 2007, 2008, 2009, you know, all, all the way down because people, like if you remember, if you go back to 2007, 2007 was the year that iPhone came out and mm. the mobile world looked completely different. So a lot of innovations that came through that were, were just starting off. So it was really a fascinating, uh, uh, fast moving space. Mm -hmm. uh, you had iPhone, you had Android, you had the, 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 like the big clash of the, the um, platforms mm -hmm. and you had the mobile economy coming, uh, coming on, in-app purchases, subscription uh, business models and a lot of things were actually going through that space. But sure. somehow, kind of, I kind of got drawn down into the, 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 the startup scene more and more, especially in Croatia and the Balkans a little bit, you know, um, wider. I moved. I, I, I mean, isn't that amazing? You kind of went, lived through the Yugoslav breakup and civil war, and yet yep. you get involved in this Balkan startup <coughs> ecosystem, which is nice that it so, came to be. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's very funny because like when you start traveling around, you, you realize like that, that we were one country, and it, like a lot of our, our our customers and the way that people live and like you, you have very little difference between someone in Bosnia or Croatia or Serbia besides mm -hmm. the the obvious ones. We all love the same food. Mm. or have the same food, drinks, you know, things like this. So, mm. like, we, we watch the same movies, we, we have the same language. So it's basically, and we got stuck in, during the 90s and early 2000s, we got stuck in, a, in, in this void of transition where, yeah. you know, some, like Croatia, Slovenia was the most advanced one, because mm. Croatia was lagging a little bit be, behind, you know, Serbia, Bosnia, Macedonia, you know, all of the, all of the countries, mm. uh, you know, afterwards. So. Yeah the region was just trying to kind of survive and 
kind of go ahead. Mm -hmm. So my first touch with the startups were in Slovenia because mm -hmm. one of the first companies you know that went to Y Combinator, one of the most famous um, uh, accelerators in the world, mm -hmm. in, 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 in the valley, it was Zemanta in Slovenia. So in Croatia, the, the scene was not so big. So the whole thing kind of cascaded a little bit down. So this, like Bosnia followed up, Serbia followed up, mm -hmm. you know, all of these countries kind of followed up. And I realized like we're, we're very small, like ba Balkans is a very small territory and we should use that kind of, you know, to our own advantage. So sure. yeah, so that was kind of a story around that. And I still like my father is, my father was born in Bosnia and Her uh, Herzegovina in part of Her Herzegovina. So, so my mother is from Croatia. So I'm kind of like, I was born in, in you know in a country that doesn't exist anymore and that would fall apart when i was 11 12 mm -hmm. something like this so kind of my generation was kind of defined by transition so the same thing that's happening right now the transition from the class like i think everybody could see that in 2020 it's very very evident so there was a lot of so see what so the transition of the like i lived in a communist country mm -hmm. which was not so communist it was kind of open it was communist by Relatively. definition exactly yeah. but we kind of had private property but not so much so we could be entrepreneurs but like not so much so it was kind of an oxymoron mm -hmm. uh, it was a very soft way of communism so and then we transitioned into full capitalism mm -hmm. and this is exactly what's happening right now we're transitioning from some so one form of capitalism into something else mm -hmm. nobody like i think we're going to know in what we transition into in maybe five to ten years maybe yeah. maybe and nobody knows so this is super interesting for me because it's changing and like everything around us is changing the customs the tech that we use like uh, everything around us. fast super fast. i think COVID put it on steroids exactly and it kind of like if you don't like COVID pushed a lot of people mm -hmm. to think outside of the box yeah and when thinking outside of the box was not a useful thing to do uh, and it was out of necessity and everything that like my generation has done and, and people in, in the area mm -hmm. uh, have done is out of necessity because when I was when we started our companies we didn't have um, like VC ca like venture capital didn't, didn't exist you couldn't raise money from outside people there mm -hmm. were very little angel investors so you would bootstrap and then you would see someone you know going to Vienna or Slovenia or US or Germany mm -hmm. so you kind of played with what you got so yeah, I guess that was kind of a... But your specific transition into blockchain and crypto, hmm. the, the thing they got you. So the thing, I, like, I, I, so I'm a curious guy and I started, like, I, I love to read and I like to, like to, like, try out new stuff. And I learned, you know, I found out about crypto from a friend of mine, but it was like this magic, you know, internet magic money. Magic internet money, yeah. Internet money, this monopoly money, which, like, you do something and then out of thin air you get some value. But it was not... Like it was not real up until I think it's it was 2013 or 2014. Mm -hmm. um, the, there was this Cyprus crisis, the crisis in Cyprus when the banks right. were. Basically, what happened is the government said, uh, you know, we basically screwed up. Um, okay, we didn't screw up, but somebody screwed up in the in the process. But we are going to fix it by, mm -hmm. you know, imp imposing um, a limitation. So I think that no matter how much money that you had in the bank, you could withdraw only ten thousand of I and think dollars or euros or something. And, and like I think this. they essentially nationalized a lot of that. Na exactly. Everything else was nationalized. So basically right. you could like you were left with if you had if you would s s if you were saving money your whole life mm -hmm. and then you would save let's say 100,000, 90,000 was completely nationalized because someone you know did something that they shouldn't have done and they should have should ended up in jail. And they, when I had a friend who was in Cyprus, he was not from Cyprus, he was from um, um, uh, somewhere else, but he lived there for a couple of years, and mm. then he complained to me that he has like this whole thing was starting, and he had um, a lot of money locked in, mm. and no way to uh, pull it out. And I introduced him to, to 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 Bitcoin back then, and then he basically didn't manage to pull everything out, but he managed to kind of, you know, get get some. Get right. some. And then I realized that that's, you know this that's useful. That's that may be a very good lesson for what's about to happen. Exactly, but but this is the thing. As I was growing up in 1989, we had a very big uh, inflation, and we had a, a huge revolution in Yugoslavia. In Yugoslavia. Right. And, and I watched it with my own eyes, like people being left without their like savings that they saved for all of their lives, mm -hmm. and 
like the value of money became zero or like at the beginning of the month your salary was enough to you know, provide for your family for, for, for the month and then at the end of the month you could buy ice cream for it. And then I remember, you know, and this kind of fascinated the whole thing. Uh, that's why I started, like, after law I started, um, you know, I started studying economy. So because I wanted to know how the world functions and then I realized that, you know, in this is a theoretical world, but the practice is a little bit different because it's a little bit flawed and it's a little bit crooked. It's a little bit like works good to like in majority of the cases, but in 10% of the cases, it works horribly and 10% of the cases it works, you know, super well, super well. Yeah. So, um, and this is kind of, I realized that Bitcoin and blockchain as a consequence of this brings something really powerful and disruptive to people because it ends the limitation, not, not the limitation, but restriction to money. Because right now, you know, when like 1989, if you wanted to be safe from devaluation and all of all of the worst things happening, what would happen is you would take peanuts and then you would exchange it for Deutsche Marks immediately. Right. It basically was a stable coin. Deutsche Mark was a stable coin of, Kinda, of yeah. the 80s. Um, that's, a good, that's a good good expression. Deutsche Mark was a stable coin in the 80s. I like that. For the whole region. And then right. basically I like I just connected the dots back then. So Bitcoin, although very volatile, it was the only way like a, 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 a stop, like it couldn't be stopped. It was censorship resistant, so you could take it from one place to another mm. without too much hassle. And then I started exploring uh, much more. Like I started digging quite deeper. It became, you know, it stopped being a hobby and it started being a fascination. And then a little bit, like a couple of years later, um, I was introduced to uh, Ethereum. I was mm. introduced to basically everything else, like Mastercoin, Ethereum, uh, Dogecoin. I was a huge Dogecoin fan. And then Darkcoin later Mark on. My son's at a Dogecoin. So yeah. Of course, everybody's like, it's the it's, uh, most. It's the fun one. Yeah, it's the fun one. I mean, it's a cute logo. <laughs> so tell, did, 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 you, you, you shared a neat anecdote about there was uh, some mining equipment. Oh, would... yeah. So a friend of mine. So mm, the way that I like got into crypto, just like everyone else, I don't remember. It was, I think it was 2012 or 2013, something like this. And then he had a mining rig. Uh, it was not a mining rig. It was a password uh, hashing rig. Right. And then I convinced him, please, like, I'm going to pay for the electricity if you let me use it for a while. He didn't know what I'm going to use it for, but I use it for mining, of course, mm -hmm. until, you know, he figured out what am I, uh, what am I using it for? And then he stopped. But, you know, as a consequence, we kind of we mined some Bitcoins. It was fun, but it was not worth much back then. So basically, <laughs> how many, how many did you mine? I don't remember. It was like maybe it was a, a, a six GPU, uh, six uh, GPU rig. And hey, if you got one block, if you got one block reward back then, no, it was what twenty five? No, fifty bitcoins was one block, right? Yeah. Like so that. okay, we're not gonna pursue this. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We're not, we're not gonna pursue but, this, but it's good to know. But, okay. But, yeah. <laughs> but this mining thing kind of yeah. became very interesting because it was uh, the first kind of physical thing that you could like. For me, reading the white paper was a little bit abstract. Sure. Of um, and then this was the first thing that I could like. Okay, so here's a hardware that kind of creates these, you know, digital chips. Yep. And well, think like here's the piece of paper mm -hmm. with all these formulas and the sum and this and everything mm -hmm. else, and here's a piece of hardware that implements that. Exactly. How weird. Exactly. So, yeah. so it kind of stayed like to this day. I have like a small miner at you know in my office mm -hmm. just for fun, just because I kind of like to keep it fresh and see what's happening out there. Yeah. And although it's not profitable, it's kind of fun. So whenever I'm not using it, I kind of turn it on and. I still have the I don't know the Ant Miner and the Grid Seed and the mm -hmm. I don't know GPUs back in the in my old office. But the main point is that I got introduced because of a little bit of, because of curiosity, then a little bit because of greed, and then it, as it started pumping, mm -hmm. you know, we like I had a couple of mining operations with a couple of friends in in in, in a consequence of years. But then 2013 it changed because for me and I was in Poland and this is where I met our common friend mm -hmm. Pavel. And it was Pavel uh, Kravchenko, everyone. Yeah, distribute <laughs> lab. Hey, Pavel. Super yeah. smart guy, and remember, it was like two of my friends back then were in the accelerator that was running from Ukraine, and uh, they said, "Oh, there's a super cool guy, you know, coming on here, and he knows a lot about Bitcoin, a lot about you know crypto, you know, let's make a meetup." And the meetup was, you know, Ivan. Uh, it was Ivan, another guy, Pavel, me, and I think Pavel's wife. And that's it. Yep. So, and then he kind of explained it to me, although I kind of understood it. For the first time I understood it back then, it was like, ah, okay, so that's what what it's all about. And then it kind of started. 
you know the the whole my exploration into in, in, into the deep. Mm -hmm. So you know we kind of got a, a couple of um, uh, how do you call it like uh, donation campaigns going. Mm -hmm. So you know there was a couple of um, just like donate with Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin just for fun. You know I set up okay. people's wallets with uh, paper wallets for Dogecoin and stuff like this, and then I started exploring a little bit more and more and more. So I was working in a telecom back then, so I said, okay, maybe I can convince some Pleto to do something like novel with this. So I think in 2014, we built uh, um, like a small widget that you could top up your mobile phone with, with oh, right. Bitcoin. Interesting. Okay. Uh, just for fun, because it's like it's, uh, the only way to get into Probably Bitcoin. That's what Linus Torvald said about Linux, about Linux mm -hmm. when he put the original ad on the use group for like working on the kernel, he said just for fun. Yeah, it's amazing. What, <laughs> it, it, it's amazing what comes from just for fun. Exactly, but I think you know, like uh, 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 the, the, the the true like proper groundbreaking stuff usually comes from fun, not not because of people trying to uh, ah let, let's change the world. Maybe maybe yes, you know mm -hmm. you want to change the world, but like first you need to have fun. It needs to be interesting. It needs to be like you, it needs to intrigue you so much that you you, you want to spend all of your free time exploring mm -hmm. it because it provides you with something very fresh and very new. Yep. Yeah. So that was, this is how. And, and today, what's your thing? So today, so up until two months ago, I was working for a blockchain project, uh, project an open source protocol called Eternity Blockchain. Oh yeah. Oh, and. Yeah. Um, Which we're gonna feature on an upcoming show. Yes. Yeah. So I, I met Yanni, the, 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 the founder back in 2013, because he was one of the only guys that I knew back then um, who knew what blockchain, like not blockchain, was not a thing back then, it was Bitcoin mm -hmm. uh, uh, was, and he had a physical Bitcoin. So I started talking to him, it was a super interesting guy, and we started kind of exploring a little bit. So when I, I was running something called Hub385 uh, in Zagreb after mm -hmm. I left Telecom, and we like basically Hub Three Five was sold to to Rent Twenty Four, one like a big chain of uh, co-working spaces. And I was trying to figure out what I want to do for the next couple of years. And I said, now it's time to go full time into blockchain. Like I want to dedicate yeah. everything that I have, like all all of my free time, to trying to figure out you know what this new very fresh thing is. So this was I think beginning of two thousand eighteen. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think I, I officially, my official starting date was, I think, like, first of April or March or something like this. And then I started working, uh, you know, within the ecosystem quite heavily. We, we, we have done many, many things like, like business development for, for it, partnering. Mm -hmm. We started the decentralized accelerator for it. We, we basically were looking for all these cool startups using blockchain and then trying to help them to, to you know, finish the product and start behaving like a proper company with just a blockchain component uh, on it. So it was quite challenging. It was like, like it was super, super, super fun, mm -hmm. but it was, it was, uh, you know, back in the early, early days of, um, you know, before like the pumping was just starting to end right so the ICO I have the good old days exactly yeah and two months ago together with uh, a couple of guys like Nicola the Nicola Stoyanov the, the, the one of the co-founders also of Eternity mm -hmm. we basically we left uh, uh, we left like operational roles there to focus on uh, we want to raise a fund that's gonna invest in blockchain companies worldwide and the so fund is the fund is called meta change capital and we're in the middle of fundraising, so um, you know that's that's my primary primary goal. Meta change capital. Meta change capital. So basically, the the whole end game is that we believe that blockchain and everything that is happening right now, you know, uh, is representing a change of the meta game. Got so, it. Okay. So meta changes. That means that the rules will change or are changed already. So some people understood it, some people didn't understand it. So for those who understood, I'll give you an example. So. For those who understood that the mobile is happening, that it's mm. going to take over the world in the next five years, in 2007, 8, 9, were the ones who created the massive big companies mm. in all over. So this is the same thing happening in the blockchain. Whoever understood that tokenization is something super powerful, that uh, cryptocurrencies are not a bad thing, they're a super, super efficient way of shifting value from one point to another uh, without the overhead, that, um, you know, there's amazing amount of technical innovations like zero knowledge proofs like like so many things um, that 
are going to completely swipe the world in the next couple of years. And they may be flawed right now, and then it may be like a, a, a child's play or just a toy right now, but in the next couple of years, they're going to be um, basically the, the well, backbone. It's like Jurassic Park or Alien. You know, it starts off all smart and cute, small and cute, and, and then, then <laughs> they say, you know, you got a velociraptor. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So that's but, but, but that's your project now, meta change. Exactly, capital. meta change capital. Fantastic. So that's the that's the. We still have like um, a couple of companies from the portfolio from from back from the Starfleet that we're helping and making sure that from they Starfleet. Starfleet. That's the that's the accelerator that they were. So God love it. Star Trek <laughs> reference. I think. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna feature Luca and the panel that he's assembling on our formal Crypto Wednesday show next Wednesday. I, I just want to give everyone an opportunity to meet him and hear from him. And you know, I, I can't think of any better place to wrap up than a reference to Starfleet, right? Yes. I mean, you know, that's that's definitely ending on a high note. So, Luca, this is the brief intro. We're going to do it. Thank you very much. We're, we're featuring twice in one week. I don't think we've ever done that with anyone, but, you know, I think <laughs> in this case it's warranted. So, I want to thank you and your family and everything thank for the hospitality Lord. and Mike Healy for connecting us. And, you know, it's, right. it's been grand. And everyone, Croatia is beautiful. That is the... That is the bay as I read it out split. And what what town am I, am I in, by the uh, way? Right now you're in Trogir. I'm in Trogir. Chiovo, the island of Chiovo. There you go. But my wife knows this. I have no idea. I just <laughs> kind of flew in. All right. Anyways, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll catch you in a few days. Bye, all. Thumbs up. Star. Star May you live long and prosper. Yeah, live long and prosper. <laughs> there you go.